Getting started in flying radio control airplanes has never been easier nor more affordable. You have a wide range of aircraft, power plants, and radios to choose from, but how do you know where to get started, what's the first step, and what plane do you choose? In this video, I'm going to break it all down for you so you can get started now. Let's go. Hi, I'm JR, the Traveling Tech Guy. I've always loved traveling, making new friends, and seeing America for all of her beauty. I also fell in love with radio control airplanes at a young age. We feature videos on our family's travel adventures, as well as anything RC airplane related. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button and press the bell notification so you'll never miss an episode. Back when I first got into RC airplanes at the tender age of 14, I was like most. Didn't know where to start, didn't know what planes to choose, so I visited my local hobby shop, found a plane that I just absolutely fell in love with, knew nothing about it, talked to the guy behind the counter, he set me up with all the equipment I needed, so I spent roughly about $1,500 to $2,000. But with no previous instructions or guidance from an experienced pilot, I took off from a roadway, I started having that sinking feeling as I saw my plane disappearing into the sunset, only to be mortified when I heard it crash in my neighbor's yard. The thoughts of all the money and time I spent putting this plane together to see it destroyed in a matter of seconds was really heart-wrenching. So like most, I quit the hobby. Fast forward a few years and I met a pilot who took me under his wings and he kind of showed me the ropes and guided me on what type of planes to buy. and basically how to fly them. Now that I've been back in the hobby for eight years, it's my turn to return the favor. I want to help you learn how to fly, what planes to choose, so that you become a successful RC pilot. Here are my tips on helping you get into the RC airplane hobby without draining your wallet. Tip number one, start with a local flying field. You can pick up a wealth of knowledge from the members that are flying. Most will set you up on a buddy box with a club trainer and get you flying the very first day so you can experience it without the worry of crashing. And if you're in an area that doesn't have a local flying club, that leads us to tip number two. I guess for me the next best thing to a flying club would be buying a computer simulator. When I got back into the hobby, I practiced for about four months with a computer simulator before I ever bought my first airplane. And what a computer simulator or flight simulator does for you, it teaches you the basics of flight takes you how to take off and land without crashing and it also builds up muscle memory so that you don't have to constantly think about what you're doing it becomes automatic the great thing about a flight simulator on your computer is that no matter how many times you crash you have a red reset button that you can start over so this makes it a perfect platform instead of going out buying an airplane every week when you're in the middle of the learning process you can just hit the reset button instant new plane. That will save you a ton of bucks. There are several flight simulators to choose from. The two that I happen to like are made by Phoenix and the other one is called Real Flight from Great Planes. You can pick both of them up for around $180 and I'll post a link down in the description. Tip number three, what plane should you buy for your first time out? Now I know it might be tempting to look at P-51 Mustangs or Corsairs or a jet, any one of those planes, they've got that cool factor. But remember, the goal is to learn how to fly first. Those planes will come in time. Right now, what you need is a simple plane just to get started with that will teach you the basics of flight, how to control it, how to visualize the orientation, whether it's going away from you or coming towards you. Now, the best kind of plane to get would be a trainer. Most trainers are designed with a dihedral wing that makes them very stable in the air and uh, very forgiving in case you have some kind of uh-oh moment. Okay, a good beginner plane would be this little Cub Champ. The thing that I like about it, it is made of high density durable foam, comes with an electric motor, and only has three channels, which is the motor, elevator, and rudder. You don't need much more than that when you first get started. This will get you the basics you can fly this in a small little area because it's only got a 16 inch wingspan. You can actually pick it up for about $90 and I'll put a link in the description below. If you'd rather have a larger airplane, 
such as one that's in the uh, 50 to 68 inch wingspan category. Those are excellent trainers as well. And a couple of them that are club favorites are going to be the E-Flight Apprentice as well as the Flyzone Sensei. Both have a wingspan of 58 plus inches. Both are made of high density foam, come with electric motor. Both those models you can find ready to fly. Now you're going to spend a little bit more money on these larger airplanes. Uh, the Sensei as well as the uh, Apprentice both go for about $280. But like I said, they're ready to fly, so they have the radio, they have the battery, they have the battery charger, they have the airplane. You don't need anything else to get going flying. But you will need a larger area to fly in. Whereas the little Cub Champ that I showed you, you can fly it basically in a cul-de-sac, a little small area or a small park. These bigger planes, you need a larger park or a flying field to fly it at. As I mentioned in tip one, a flying field or flying club is going to be your best place to learn. The members there will be more than happy to lend a hand to get you flying, get you experience, and get you comfortable, most of all, flying. In addition to joining a flying club, you're also going to want to join the Academy of Model Aeronautics. The AMA is the one organization that governs our hobby. They represent us to the U.S. government to keep them from enacting laws that are unfair to our hobby as well as they provide insurance if you accidentally hurt somebody, destroy property. Now for more information on the AMA, I'll post a link down in the description. So to recap, you don't have to spend a lot of money to get started in radio control airplanes. You just have to get out there. Use my steps as a guide, you'll be flying in no time. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up and let me know down in the comments and consider subscribing. Till next time.